to have a trot in here first, just for, just for two minutes, and then we'll go up to the gallops. Okay, so we've got a Claire online, Alien Storm, what's Will on Free Thinker. So around here we also got, so you see we've got jumps either, either both sides, um, and, we, and we do a lot of schooling around here as well. They, they'll just go round and round and round in circles, jumping four okay. jumps each lap. Rach, you can do two. Hector, two. Vivas, two. Eclair, two. Freethinker, two. Hey, tell you what, you're, you're the man who does one every day today. Uh, one, and a, what? One, just, he out, yeah, he, just, he ran in the last week, so just do one with him. See, the wind, the wind up to Kelso is strong now, and it's going down, and it's going down slowly this afternoon. Right, so if we all know that the most important person in a training operation is the trainer's wife. So as wife of Charlie Longson, what, uh, what does that entail within the business? Uh, what does that entail? It, um, all of the things that everybody else doesn't have time to do, I do. Oh, great. So I make a lot of coffee, a lot of tea, clean the loos, um, and you know, just be, try and be his wingman, really. Okay, and that's every day of the week, is it? Yeah, you... most days. Most days, um, when and if I'm needed, really. Okay, and I imagine that also entails a lot of chatting to owners, dealing yep. with the staff as well. Yep, yep, all of that, all of that. And when Charlie's racing and we've got people coming in, I'll try and be here. And if he's here, I don't necessarily need to be here. And we work it like that. So that's the heart, Chipping Knobs is the highest town in Oxfordshire. This is the highest village in Oxfordshire. So we're on the same height as Rollwright, really. Yeah, look, we are lucky. We are, we are, we are, it's a lovely spot. Yeah. Um, as you can feel, it's quite fresh. It is quite fresh. So wait, first lot goes out at what time? Seven o'clock. Seven. Um, eight, then just after eight, well, just, you know, just after seven, just after eight. Um, then that, probably about half ten is about the fourth lot, and then they might, half eleven, the final lot, and maybe finish probably normally by twelve, quarter past twelve. We see it as a way of life rather than a, a job, I think. Did you envisage this life for yourself no. when you were growing up? No. no. What did no. you have in mind? No. Uh, I don't know what I had in mind, <laughs> but not this, probably. I love it. My brother, we, we, we all grew up point-to-pointing, team chasing, hunting. Um, so we were always quite horsey, but um, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't set out to marry a trainer, I don't think. And not only are you married to a trainer, but your brother's also a trainer. We were yeah. completely surrounded. Yeah, Christmas chats are really boring. Yeah, <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> a lot of horsey chat, but um, you know it's it's fun. It's are, fun. Are they competitive? You've got Charlie Long, your brother, your husband, and Ben Pauling, your brother. What's that like? The dynamic? They're they're very competitive, uh, which I think you have to be, um, whether brother-in-law or not. But at the end of the day, they get on really well, and we're all really close. So we're we're pretty good at at leaving the race at the race course. yards at 20 past six, half six, get, help get the horses on the walker, um, get the massage rugs on horses, do the washing, whatever, just do whatever needs to be done. We do, we're good at doing the washing, um, or tidy up the washing, or help do anything that needs doing. Yeah, and then... Do you find it a struggle every day, like when the alarm goes off, are you happy to bounce out of bed? Oh, I'm always awake. You always just Whether I bounce out of bed is a different matter, but I definitely, <laughs> I'm always awake, yes. I mean, you're kind of, yeah, you're sort of, for how many years, it's instilled in you, isn't it, that's on um, that routine. So um, I don't think anyone ever bounces out of the bed at, at you know, six in the morning, whatever it is. But um, yeah, look, you're quite happy. That's just, yeah, that's what you and do. And that's six days a week? It's six days a week and on Sunday. Sunday, I do try, not always, but try and not race too much on a Sunday. Um, just because we have a youngish family. Millie's 11 and the boys are nine. Twin boys. Twin boys, yeah. Wow. I admire you. Um, but you said two like the racing and one doesn't. Yeah, so Millie and Harry love it, especially Harry, who's just had his first pony race. Um, How'd that go? Uh, he, if you ask him, he came fifth, but he actually came sixth. Um, okay. He gave it a good drive on his hunter all the way down the home straight. Um, and Freddie is a footballer and a rugby player and very much not into horses. Knowing myself growing up in a, in a racing yard, it's, it's so all-encompassing that you either get on board or you don't. Sometimes they go completely the other direction. So yeah. that, that must be quite hard to manage. You've got two 
who, who massively love it and one that doesn't. So there's a fear of a bit of exclusion, I suppose. A little bit. So we, we do make the most important thing on a Saturday morning is the football match, Freddie's football match. So, um, and all the horses have to come after that. Okay, for you and for Charlie, or how does that work? Because Saturday is the biggest um, day of the week. Actually, um, Charlie, uh, if he's not racing, he can. He normally skips out because it's always always local, and goes and watches half a game, mm -hmm. and then he'll come back again. Um, but it obviously, if he's if he's gone racing or he's busy here, then I'll go. Um, and he told me that Sunday is a, a pretty sacrosanct. That if, yeah. unless there's something really important going on in the racing world, he'll always try and spend it yeah in the kids. early days he was racing saturdays and sundays and it was pretty apparent when we had three children two and under that actually we just needed a day a week um which is we try and do a sunday and unless it's really really urgent then he really does try and he does the rugby on a sunday morning and with the boys and millie normally has hockey games in the on sunday afternoon so um yeah, he's, he's a very much daddy on a Sunday. Rugby is very important on Sunday morning. He's got to do the rugby with the kids, the boys on Sunday morning. So yeah, no, normally I'm in the yard from eight till about, just eight till 10 in the morning mm -hmm. on a Sunday. Just check everything's all right from the day before, entries, decorations or whatever, and then kick on to rugby. Um, and then I, obviously last weekend, you know, some weekends I will go racing. Um, you know, um, like I went to Exeter and Snow Leopardess round the other day. Um, and then normally I, yeah, normally, yeah, normally it's, it's more of a family day, mm -hmm. and you've got to have those as well. And I think it's what? very that's vitally. Yeah, racing is so all-consuming. Yeah, we love it. You know, it's our life. It's our livelihood. It's our you know our hobby. Our, what we love, but you can it can be all too all-consuming sometimes. You need, I think, you go mad if you were doing it seven days a week. Um, you know, you need a little bit of time to just go and spend with family, and you know, you might have had shocking days at work, and that the family, the family slightly bring you bring bring you back to reality, don't mm. they? And the evenings. What do you to do? Not a lot. <laughs> Not a lot. I sort of ignore the phone from about half seven onwards in the evening and um, yeah, just sit and relax. <laughs> <laughs> who, yeah. who cooks? Sophie generally cooks. Yeah. Generally cooks. I mean, God, don't get me wrong, some evenings are fairly hectic. We, you know, some evenings we've got football, hockey um, with the kids again. Yeah, football, there's, there's netball, there's football, there's oh, hockey wow. um, on various nights on, you know, Wednesdays are busy night. We're trying to be in three places at one time, yeah. um, but that's just that's that's fine. You know, that's that's what it is. And at the end of the day, the children are the most important part in that sense. And they've um, we've got to, we've got to embrace what they want to do. So you've got to have your downtime as well. It can't you can't be living and breathing it twenty four seven. What do you put it down to? The good form this season. Oh, by the way, I think they're pretty just a nicer bunch of horses we've had for some time. And that's uh, down nice, to a bunch of young luck or different people buying um, for you? Or? Yeah, there's an element of luck. There's always an element of luck. You know, you always, you always think when you're buying a horse, you think you're, you're buying the next, you're hoping you're going to buy the next nice horse, but they've, but sometimes it doesn't prove, up, prove to be the case. <laughs> you always love buying the, the Irish point to point horse, which is always, some people say would be a lottery, but you know, you, I love buying privately actually as well in Ireland. You, know, you, have a, you have a few good contacts in Ireland, you know, and you can't, you just kind of tip away, look at them and find, you know, you're and just trying to find, trying to find horses with, of, of value. It's great having like, there's like the Snow Leopardess, for example, she's a homebred. That's um, Millie's pony. <laughs> you get a lot of satisfaction um, training, training for owner breeders. And how much do you kind of find yourself uh, on the ride, like when you have horses running in important races, or even just day-to-day -day races? Are you as emotionally invested yes. as Charlie? Yeah, completely. Yeah, yeah no, um, I'm a really competitive person anyway. Um, so, um, yeah, we've, we're all, as a family, we're all very competitive. I remember with Millie, um, uh, when she was little, we used to have to put the boys to bed and then we used to have to play a board game with her to make her lose because she couldn't lose very easily. <laughs> so we're all really competitive and we all get really involved and scream the horses home. And um, So yeah, no, it's, it's, as I say, it's a way of life and I think yeah, we're all very much in it. 